Let's start lecture number three of numerical solution of partial differential equations. And in this lecture, we are going to learn the second numerical method to solve parabolic PDs. And in parabolic PDs, we are specifically discussing the heat equation. The method is BTC, BTCS method, also known as Lazonan method. This method is implicit method. So once again, in parabolic equation, we are considering 1D heat equation. And once again, to solve heat equation, we have two types of methods, explicit methods and implicit methods. Last time we discussed one of the explicit method, which was FTCS method. And we developed the MATLAB code of this explicit method. And this time we are going to discuss implicit methods. The first difference between explicit and implicit methods is that in implicit methods, we have more than one unknown in the equation. Like for this heat equation, the equation we considered, we are going to have three unknown values at n plus one time level, while at n time level, we have only one known value. So to understand this concept, let's start the first implicit method, which is going to be BTCS method, also known as Lazonin method. So BTCS method is implicit method, of course. So in this method, we move backward in time and central in space. That is what BTCS stands for. So to discretize the considered 1D heat equation by using BTCS method, we will move backward in time with respect to time and central with respect to space. So if we are in time at n level, we have to move in backward direction. So at minus n minus one time step. So ui at n time step minus ui at n minus one time step divided by the time step. In space, we will freeze in time like for time we freezed in space now in space we will freeze at time so you can see all have n at them all use have n in the superscripts and in the subscript uh, we are applying the central de derivative formula for the second derivative so i plus one i and i minus one one minus two plus one are the weights and divided by space times at step whole square delta x square since i don't like the n minus one thing in this superscript so i will just replace n with the n plus one in the above equation that will make no difference so i am replacing n with n plus one so above equation will look like this so i will not have any n minus one term this will not affect my equation at all. Now in the next step, I will move this delta t over there and I am taking this whole thing as a constant because all of these things are constant. My alpha should be known, which is diffusivity constant or thermal conductivity constant for heat equation. Delta t is the time step and delta x is the space step all these things are constant so i am making them one constant and naming it as d so after writing it as d i am moving ui n on the right side this is the next shape of my equation and in the next step if i simplify all these things so you can see on the left side i have all the terms which have n plus 1 in their superscript and at the right hand side i have only one term which have n in his superscript keep in mind that only n values are known and n plus 1 values are unknown 
so for the first iteration we will know this n from the initial condition but we have to find all these unknowns at n plus one time level to understand this concept we will do a practice question now here i am about to tell you that what are the advantages of implicit methods that why we are involving more computations and why we are not satisfied with the explicit methods like FPCM. So the big advantage of implicit method are that most of them are unconditionally stable. So they do not need any condition for their stability. Like FTCS method has stability condition of uh, that d should be less than this d should be less than equal to 1 by 2 but in implicit method like this btcs method we do not have stability condition so it will be stable for all cases let's do a practice question to understand btcs method more so in this case uh, i have a heat equation in which diffusivity constant alpha is 1 since we cannot see alpha here so it should be 1 the domain the space domain of this pd is from 0 to 1 while this pd is eligible for all time t greater than 0 at the boundary i have zero temperature if this is heat equation so u at 0 for all time u at 1 for all time should be 0 the temperature at the boundary should be 0 while the initial temperature inside the rod at t is equal to 0 is defined by this function sine pi x so i must write that here x is between 0 and 1 because at boundaries i define the temperature as 0 but inside the rod at time t is equal to 0 the temperature is defined by this function so i have to take the uh, tired space step 0 0.1 and time step 0 0.01 to solve this uh, 1D heat equation using BTCS method and I have to find all the values of u for t is equal to 0 to t is equal to 0 0.02 so first let's determine the total number of nodes in time and spatial domain for space domain I have to move from 0 to 1 since uh, my PD is defined in this domain with this space step so I will start from 0 while taking the jump of 0 0.1 I will eventually reach at 1 and my I will start from 0 to 10 so I have total 11 nodes in space in time I will start from 0 and end at 0 0.02 with time step 0 0.01 so I am starting from 0 taking the 0 0.01 time step and I have only 3 nodes in time domain n0, n1 and n2 let's have a complete picture of our 2d mesh so these green nodes are again will be known from initial and boundary conditions left green nodes are known from boundary condition right green nodes are known from right boundary condition and these nodes should be known from initial condition because they are at time level zero these black nodes are the nodes that we have to find by using BTCS method. Now from boundary condition, the first boundary condition is U0T which means at space I am freezing at node 0 and for all time nodes the value is 0. So in time nodes I have only 3 possibilities 0, 1 and 2 since my time nodes are 3 in number 0, 1, 2. So all these values are 0 because of the boundary condition. U1T, right boundary condition. So 1 is the last space node which was the 10th. For all time its value is 0. For time I have 3 possibilities 0, 1 and 2. So U0, 10, U1, 10 and U2, 10 are zeros. From initial conditions Ux is 0 is equal to uh, like Ui and time is 0 for all space 
time node zero for all space the value is defined by this function so this in function is involving x so i have to write small i in the subscript of x because i have different nodes in x direction for u zero zero since x naught is the first node which is at zero so sign zero pi then u zero one sign zero point one pi these are the values coming from the nodes node values at of x this is the first node value of x this is second then third and so on so you can see all these values i shouldn't have to find these values since these are lies at boundaries they will overlap with the boundaries but in this case the values are same because at the boundaries i have the condition zero also now our goal is to calculate the inner nodes and for inner nodes we are specifically using btcs scheme the discretized equation of btcs scheme was this that we did earlier and d in this case is coming out to be 1 I am putting all the values alpha, delta t, and delta x square for this case, and d is coming out to be 1. Since this method is unconditionally stable, so we don't have to worry about the value of the d. Now, the important thing is how many interior nodes are there at each time level. So, you can see at each time level, the interior nodes are 9, which are 11 minus 2, the total nodes per. 11 but the interior nodes at each time level are 9 so i'm going to have 9 total space equations at each time level so i will start putting i is equal to 1 i is equal to 2 i is equal to 3 and all these values up till i is equal to 9 in the main equation this main equation and i will get these 9 equations now we have the answer that how we will get over unknowns at n plus one time level since we have nine unknowns at n plus one time level so you can see in all these equations on the left hand side you will have only nine unknowns at n time level and we have total nine equations in number nine equations nine unknowns so we are going to have system of nine linear equations that we will solve to get the nine unknowns at n plus one time level don't worry about this u zero at n plus one this will come from the left boundary condition and this u 10 at n plus one will come from right boundary condition and on the right hand side for the first iteration all these values are known from the initial condition since we will put n is equal to 0 and from the initial condition these values are known I got these equations by substituting the value of d in the main equation if I do not put the value of d then d will uh, remain intact with these equations instead of this constant number I am going to have a d with it okay so nine equations nine unknowns so i am forming a system of linear equation so in the first equation uh, since uh, i know this thing from the left boundary condition this thing is known so i'm moving it on the right hand side to make this equation more comfortable so only these two things are left u1 with u1 n plus 1 and u2 n plus 1 so i'm writing only these two things and i'm moving this corner thing on the right hand side so you can see from here i moved it on the right hand side and i only have minus 3 and 1 minus 3 will touch with u1 n plus 1 and 1 will touch with u2 n plus 1 and from the second equation till the eighth equation i have values like 
uh, I have u1 n plus 1, u2 n plus 1, u3 n plus 1. Then in the next equation, u1 is missing. I am starting from u2, u3, u4 till the eighth equation. I am going till u9. So if I will write a coefficient matrix for this equation, it will look like this. It's a tri diagonal system. I have three diagonal values. For the last equation, I am again using only these two values for u8 i have weight 1 and for u9 i have weight minus 3 and u10 is known from boundary condition so i am moving it on the right hand side again so i have a system 9 cross 9 system that i will solve to get the unknowns at each n plus 1 time level so for solving this system i can use lu decomposition method or if I'm using a MATLAB, I can directly solve this method by using a forward slash b command. If I'm storing a as a coefficient matrix and b as the source vector. So uh, for the first iteration, I will just put n is equal to 0 in the above system and I will get something like this. The right hand values are known from initial and boundary condition and I will get these unknowns by solving this system. So by solving this system and so by putting all the values on the right hand side and then solving this system, I will get these unknowns. These are the unknown values you can verify, but we will verify when we will make the code MATLAB code of this algorithm for iteration number two I am just putting n is equal to one in the main equation now these equations are known from the previous iteration or and some values are known from the boundary condition I will utilize those values and I will put them here and then I will solve this system again and I will get something like this and if I show you a complete picture of my mesh, these values were known from left boundary condition, these from right boundary condition, these from initial condition. These values I computed in first iteration and these in second iteration. And that's it. That's all about BTCS method. How we solve a question using btcs method which is an implicit scheme so in implicit schemes we are definitely having a system of linear equation that we have to solve to get our answer now let's develop the matlab code of this scheme so for matlab code i have opened the matlab and i opened the code of ftcs method since we are not writing those ingredients again we are saving time I have also modified some things in uh, FTCS method uh, like I am using this round command here. Sometimes uh, when my length value or time value is in points, I keep getting the error from the MATLAB that my array must have positive or logical values. Even if my answer is like 4.000, it will give me error. So I am using the round a command to make sure that this answer comes in integer okay so my ingredients are defined my total length my total time of simulation alpha uh, i have to modify this dx and dt according to my question which was here my dt is 0 .0, 0 0.01 and dx is 0 0.1. dx is 0 0.1 and it is 0 0.01. And my d constant will come as alpha dt divided by dx square. n will be the total space nodes. I explained this thing in the FTCS code. And m are the total time nodes since. Uh, number of nodes are always one greater than the total number of intervals okay so this is my space vector this is my time vector and this is how i will get the values of space and time vector and then 
these are the dimension of my u matrix this is the left boundary condition u first column and u last column is the right boundary condition and this is the initial condition since i do not want to overwrite the boundary condition with initial condition so i am moving in these columns so i am deleting the next code since i do not need that one i have to write this code for btcs method let's run this code for a while to let's see uh, what we will have up till here like till line 21 to run this code i saved it with the name btcs and i'm running it so you can see i have alpha value d value here in the workspace dt total space nodes are 11 and total time nodes are 101 oh, since we are ending the simulation time at 1 and in our question the simulation time was 0 0.02 so let's run this again and also let's see what our u will look like okay now it's perfect we have three time nodes and we have 11 space nodes and here is the picture of the u left boundary condition has zero values right boundary condition also has zero values and these are my initial condition in this case i am using the initial condition in the first row instead of using it in the last row as we did in the fdcs method okay let's come back to the code now after defining the boundary and initial condition i have to introduce my coefficient matrix since coefficient matrix always contains something constant so in the coefficient matrix instead of writing this minus 3 and 1 this minus 3 is what this minus 3 is basically uh, this thing negative of 1 plus 2d so let's write it here it's negative of 1 plus 2d since we are making this code a general code and this one is basically d once again in the second row this one is d this minus 3 is 1 plus 2d negative of 1 plus 2d and this one is again d so this is uh, how my a matrix will look like so let's write this a matrix let's introduce this a matrix in uh, matlab now the dimension of this eight uh, a matrix is nine cross nine but my space nodes was total 11 so if my n is 11 so the dimension of this eight matrix a matrix must be n minus 2 cross n minus 2 so i introduced my a matrix with the dimension n minus 2 cross n minus 2 and b with dimension since b is a vector of 9 cross 1 in that case so it will be n minus 2 cross 1 now i have to introduce what will be the entries of this a and b matrix now the first corner entry of a matrix is always minus 1 plus 2d like here and the second entry will always be d first row second column and similarly the last row and the second last entry last row and second last entry so this is n minus 2 cross n minus 3 entry and it will come as d while the corner entry the right bottom corner entry will always be minus 1 plus 2d which is uh, a n minus 2 n minus 2 entry for the remaining entries since i have a pattern like i have a tri-diagonal thing i have three entries basically so i always have these entries one minus one three which are like d minus one plus two the d so i will use a loop for these entries and loop will start from two and 
goes till n minus 3. So my this loop will introduce all those three entries. My loop is starting from 2 and ending at n minus 3. So a i i minus 1 entry is d, a i i entry is minus 1 plus 2d and a i i plus 1 entry is d. So till here I introduced my a matrix. For b matrix I have to update the b matrix in each iteration. So now I am going to perform the iteration loop. Now my iteration loop will start from n is equal to 1 and n till m minus 1. The reason is same again because in iterations I am putting n is equal to 0 and n is equal to 1 only but my total n were 0, 1 and 2. So I am putting 1 less n in this case. So my loop is ending till m minus 1. So inside the loop what I have to do is first I have to update my b and then solve this system to get my unknowns. And again my first and the last entry of b is different from all the other entries. So I am writing them separately. So my b first entry is minus uh, un comma 2. This is the value coming from my left boundary condition and this value is coming from my initial condition just like here so this value is from boundary condition and this one is from initial condition since in MATLAB I don't have a zero position of an vector or an array so this value is like u12 in time it's 1 and in space it's the 2 value and this value is u21 or generally uh, this value is u n2 and this value is u n plus 1 one so that's just what i wrote in the matlab you can see from here un2 plus un plus 1 1 and i'm taking the negative sign common and similarly for the last value of b which is the n minus 2 value of b so i have to use this thing which is like u n and this value is basically 10th value so 10th value is stored in n minus 1 and this value is u n plus 1 and this is 11th value not the 10th in case of MATLAB and 11th is stored in n and once again I am taking the negative sign common here so now i have to worry about the inner values of the b which have some pattern these values so for these values i will use a loop and the loop will start from i is equal to 2 to n minus 3 since the total entries of b are n minus 2 and I have to find the entries from 2 till n minus 3. So b i th entry will be minus u times uh, minus u n -th row i plus 1 column. So this is basically b second entry of b. And if I am in MATLAB, I have to write it like b n 3 since I do not have 0 in MATLAB and it is the third entry if I start from 0 so in general I just have to write like b i th entry is minus u n -th row i plus 1 column entry now I have my complete a and complete b in each iteration so I have to just find these unknown 
to solve this system i will use matlab built in command forward slash a forward slash b forward slash will take the inverse of a and multiply it with b so i am storing the unknowns in a vector named as w so a forward slash b will solve the above system and store it in w so basically i got these nine answers in case i have total 11 nodes so i got these nine answers and i have to update these nine answers in my final mesh like at time level one i got the answer so i have to update these answers in my u matrix so these nine answers will be basically stored here like u n plus one row and the columns are the inner columns only since boundary conditions are fixed so this is the algorithm of btcs method now this outer loop will always find a new b in each iteration and based on that b we will find values of unknowns and we will update those unknowns at each time level so at the end of this loop we can see how our u will look like so let's run this code okay so you can see my boundary conditions are fixed so these are the values from boundary conditions this first row till here is the initial condition and this is at time level 1 and this row is the answer at time level 2 we can also compare this from our solution here so that's it code of the bts method is complete now let's modify this code for plots for this i will copy the lines from ftcs code again uh, from here till the end so the first plot is x versus u at some fixed time and this time the time is the last time so ending time t is equal to t end we can say and the second pl plot is t versus u at some fixed x and the x here is x is equal to x center we can say also i have modified this code for not getting the error here because sometime when i have number of n odd then odd divided by 2 will generate a decimal number here so there is no decimal column of any matrix so i am rounding it off here so now let's compare the both method ftcs and btcs by setting some d uh, which must be less than equal to half uh, because btcs method will always converge but for ftcs the condition is d must be less than or equal to half you can see that in this method uh, in this particular example the d was 1 so btcs was converging so first i am running the ftcs code for the ingredients are uh, length is 1 and total time is also 1 while the step sizes are these the value of d that i am getting is 0 0.1 which surely meets the criteria and boundary conditions are 0 and initial condition is this so now i am going to run the btcs code with the same conditions and everything is same so btcs method is unconditionally stable so let's run this now the figure number one is this one figure which is from ftcs method while the figure number three is from btcs method and the results are quite same 
from both cases and for t versus u graphs the results are again the same these graphs are at the center of the column and the graphs are time versus temperature or time versus unknown function there is one more thing uh, that is that we talked about the advantages of btcs method that it will always converge for all values of t but in btcs method we always have to solve a linear system of equations and that will involve more computations and i have just used the tick and talk command to show you that for the same parameters how much time ftcs method will take and how much time btcs method will take so i'm running the ftcs method code first so ftcs method took 0.412487 seconds and now i'm going to run btcs method code and you can see the btcs method took 12 point around 13 seconds to run the same code for same initial parameter so this is the disadvantage of btcs method it involves more computation time so that's enough about btcs method see you people in next video if you are new on this channel please hit the subscribe button thank you